Today is the 14th of April, Wednesday, second week of Easter. The Gospel text is John 3, 16 to 21. We pray. Jesus, you promised to give us another paraclete to be with us forever the spirit of truth may he be with us in us to lead us to complete truth holy spirit we open our hearts to your interior teaching of the truth in our heart Amen. Jesus said to Nicodemus, God loved the world so much that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not be lost but may have eternal life for God sent his son into the world not to condemn the world but so that through him the world might be saved no one who believes in him will be condemned but whoever refuses to believe is condemned already because he has refused to believe in the name of God's only Son. On these grounds is sentence pronounced that though the light has come into the world, men have shown they prefer darkness to the light because their deeds were evil. And indeed, everybody who does wrong hates the light and avoids it. For fear, his actions should be exposed. But the man who lives by the truth comes out into the light so that it may be plainly seen that what he does is done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. God's creation was good. In God's own image, God created Adam and Eve. But they disobeyed God and all their children did the same. In Genesis 6, 5 to 6, we read, Yahweh saw that human wickedness was great on earth and that he contrived nothing but wicked schemes all day long. Yahweh regretted having made human beings on earth and was grieved at heart. The God's creation became bad. Men and women became evil. And they continue to live in this way. All God's efforts to bring them to the right path failed. God wanted to choose Israel as an instrument of salvation. All God's efforts to save them and make them instrument of salvation for the whole world was a total failure. Jeremiah, who prophesied before exile, 
to Babylon, which took place in 587 BC, Jeremiah says this about the people of Israel. Can the Ethiopian or the Sudanese change his skin? They are the darkest people. Can these people change the skin? Or the leopard, his spots, they'll be always the same. And you, can you do right? He asked the people of Israel in chapter 13, verse 23. He's saying, you will never change. They will never change their evil behavior. So they'll have to go to exile. Their hearts have become perverse. They need a heart transplant, so to say. They need a new heart. They have to be recreated. There has to be a totally new solution to the problem of evil in the human heart. Any amount of punishment did not help. People remain the same. So Jeremiah and after him Ezekiel prophesies a new covenant which will create a new heart in the people. Yet yeah, the problem of evil is the problem of the heart. The heart has to be changed. And this will take place in the new covenant. The details of this covenant were revealed only by Christ. How is this new covenant going to be executed? The main points of this new covenant are the expected Messiah will be divine Son of God. The Jews never expected Jesus to be divine, the Messiah to be divine. So, according, according to this new covenant, the Messiah will be divine Son of God who will be at the same time a human being. This is God's wonderful plan. The new covenant will be ratified in his blood of Jesus, God and man. His death will atone for all the sins of humanity. In his resurrection, he will be source of the abundant gift of the Holy Spirit. And it is this Holy Spirit who will recreate the whole world, will recreate the heart of every believer in Christ. The heart of a human being will be transformed by the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the risen Lord. With a new heart which they receive, they will be able to keep the commandment of love, the new commandment of the new covenant. In the Old Testament people refuse to obey God's commandment. They were unable to keep God's commandments. And so the old covenant was a failure. In this new covenant, they will receive a new heart. And with this new heart, they will be able to keep the commandment of love. The new commandment of the new covenant. So this new covenant is going to be a success. They, are, they will be able to love one another as Jesus loved them. 
The believers in Jesus will become the new people of God, living like brothers and sisters of one family, a reconciled family of God. The new covenant is going to be a grand success because of the new heart the believers will receive. Thus, God's love found a solution to the problem of evil in the human heart. His plan was not to condemn, to punish or destroy. God's love invented this beautiful plan of our salvation. God loved the world so much that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not be lost but may have eternal life. This is God's solution to the problem of evil in the world in human heart. Why do some people reject such a beautiful offer from God, such a beautiful offer. Because they want to go on living their old sinful life. They do not want to repent. So Jesus' message to everyone is repent and believe in the good news. Yes, they need to repent. And this is also the message of the church to all. You must repent and every one of you must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit the words of Peter on Pentecost day after his beautiful homily. You must repent and every one of you must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts 2.38 That is the double gift of the Holy Spirit. Forgiveness of sins and the gift of a new heart. This baptism is to be lived daily by repenting and avoiding sins, by dying to our old self and following Christ carrying our daily cross. In this way, we rise with him daily to new life in him. So we pray, Father, thank you for this wonderful plan of salvation, for recreating the world through the death and resurrection of Jesus, your Son. May we respond to this loving plan by daily repenting and believing in the good news. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.